Hello there! Welcome back and welcome to part 84 in my build log series of the Trumpeter 1200 scale model of the Titanic. Today I am doing quite a lot of sort of miscellaneous jobs, so I'm adding all of the benches to the model, um, and unfortunately I have actually already added those, uh, and I didn't film it because I am an idiot. So apologies for that, but there we go. Uh, I will show you some shots of where they all are. Uh, I'm also going to add all of the third class passenger figures that I'm going to put on the model. So I'm going to put them on the forward well deck, the aft well deck, and the poop deck. And I'll probably do a few sort of officers and crew on the forecastle deck as well. So that will just leave figures on the boat deck to go. Um, so yeah, it's a fairly sort of miscellaneous episode today. Um, as we're getting into really high detail stuff, things like the benches, things like that, um, it is not beyond the realms of possibility. In fact, I'd go as far as to say it's pretty likely I am going to make mistakes, put a bench where it shouldn't be put, or indeed perhaps just forget to put a bench in at all. So if you see something that you think I've done wrong, do let me know in the comments below. Don't be concerned about sort of coming across as rude or insulting. Don't worry about it. If you see something you think is wrong, let me know, because I'd much prefer that I got the model right uh, than someone didn't say, uh, and the model was slightly inaccurate. So do just give me a shout if you think I've missed anything out. So without any further ado, let's crack on. So here we go. And as you can see, benches are in place. I'll just sort of pan along the deck. And as you can see, benches are sort of dotted in and about wherever the instructions have told me to plunk one. Uh, a few more here on the fourth funnel base, some on the second class entrance, and then of course a few right at the very aft of the boat deck. Uh, and as I've said before, these really are the best of photo etch, these benches, because they just, they look absolutely brilliant. They're like the ladders, you know, they're a shape that really lends itself to being made out of photo etch because you get this really, really accurate looking bench. And it is, it is just, they're, they're just brilliant. I'm a big, big fan of them. And they really just, they help the, the model. They make the decks look that wee bit more busy, uh, which is always good. Um, but they have that genuine realism about them as well. I'll see if I can actually get that in focus. You can see that it really does add to the detail on the model. It's really lovely. So, as I say, my apologies for not um, filming my putting these in, um, but I forgot. So, we will now look at passengers. Hi there. I thought I'd just go into a bit of depth on how I've gone about positioning people on the model and the sort of clothing that they wear and so on and so on and so on. So um, what we'll do is I'll talk over the people that I've already added first. So I've added people on the aft end of A deck and the aft end of B deck. And in fact, I've done all the people on A deck and B deck generally. Uh, so these are first and second class areas. Um, so with the people on the aft of A deck, You'll notice that these are all first class people, um, but they're not in particularly heavy clothing. Um, it's hard to know for sure, because of course there aren't many photos of Titanic, for obvious reasons, um, far less with passengers on board, but there are some. Um, but what we do have is we've got a few photos of passengers on Titanic, and of course we also have photos of passengers on other ships at similar times of the year. But Titanic sailed in April on a particularly cold winter, uh, the ship would have been pretty nippy. Uh, not the insides, obviously, heating, but the outsides, the exterior, would have been bloody cold. And I mean, if you've, if you've ever been on a ship, you'll know that it is cold uh, because the sea cools the air, so the air is pretty cold to begin with. But then, you know, you're sailing forwards at 21 knots, so you're, you're going at a fair speed, you're going to get a fair headwind. Any other wind is going to come and take any more heat away. So ships, decks are always cold places. And all of the photos I've seen of passengers on Titanic and all of the sort of similar photos from other ships show passengers wearing pretty, pretty heavy clothing, pretty, pretty robust, warm stuff. Um, and so that's the sort of thing I'm trying to recreate, um, with one exception, which is the aft end of a deck, and you'll notice that all of the passengers here are in light suits and sort of fairly, fairly sort of light clothing. And the reason I've done that is because A deck was sort of the deck on Titanic for the entertainment of first class people. You know, up here you've got the reading and writing room, 
We've of course got cabins beyond that. We've got the reading and writing room, then you've got the lounge, then you've got the smoking room, and then you've got the Veranda Cafe Palm Court. So my rationale here is I've put people in sort of indoor clothing. And I've tried to sort of convey the idea that maybe they've they've just got to the deck and they've seen a few people on the deck looking at the band playing and they've gone, oh, let's have a wander out here. And because it's cold, they're probably not going to stay out there very long because they're not wearing enough clothes. But, you know, I've sort of tried to simulate them wearing indoor clothing and they've just sort of been tempted outside. Um, whereas on B deck below, people are wearing much more robust clothing. Uh, people are wearing jumpers, long skirts, quite thick suits. Um, that's that's the sort of rationale. And similarly, at the front of A and B deck, where there are not many people, because again, it would have been very cold, uh, I've tried to show people wearing much more robust clothing, thick coats and stuff like that. Uh, that is exactly the same principle I'm going to apply to people walking down the boat deck, because people obviously will have used the boat deck, uh, it's a nice place to promenade around, but it's very exposed, it's going to be very cold, so you're not going to see many people in frilly dresses up here. It's going to be a lot of coats, a lot of wool. So anyone on the boat deck is going to be pretty, pretty thoroughly dressed. So that covers pretty much all of the visible spaces for first and second class. Third class, however, is a wee bit different. Now, for reasons that I could not possibly work out, and I just can't get my head around this, the White Star Line quartered single men and single women at opposite ends of the ship. God knows why. Uh, single men usually were quartered around the bow, and single women were quartered around the stern. Now, if we think completely sort of without emotion, that means you're more likely to have lots of men in your forward well deck, and you're much more likely to have lots of women in the aft well deck. Now, for a few reasons, I suspect that probably didn't happen. Firstly, the forward well deck, pretty exposed, you're right at the front of the ship, going to get a lot of headwind coming at you. I think it would be really, really cold there. So my suspicion is that not very many people would have been on the Ford well deck. My other suspicion is I suspect most of the lads probably went aft to join the girls anyway. So when I come to fit figures to these areas of the ship, there's not going to be many people at all on the Ford well deck, but there's probably only going to be men up there. On the aft well deck and the poop deck, we're going to have much more of a mix of people, because I think that's more logical. These decks would have been slightly warmer anywhere, I'd have thought, and they're also closer to all of the third-class indoor spaces. You know, you've got the smoking room under the poop deck, and you've also got the general room on the other side. So there's a lot more stuff for the third-class people to do at this end of the ship anyway. So to me, it seems far more likely that you're going to have a more high concentration of people at the aft of your ship than you do at the front. So that's the plan. I now need to go and actually start sort of mass producing some figures because I'm going to need about 50 odd third class people to sort of do, to, to do what I want to do here. So that's a, a fair consignment of work. Right, here we are. And we've got quite a lot of figures now, quite a lot of sitting because, of course, there are a fair few benches on the poop deck, which I do want to populate uh, and quite a few standing as well. And we've got a fairly broad selection. A f very few people in shirts, but mostly people in jumpers and coats and things like that, because of course, as I've already said, it would be pretty nippy. Got a couple of people as well in things like tank tops, just to sort of add a bit more variety to the area. Uh, and, a, you know, a fairly broad range of colours. Um, perhaps not as flamboyant as first and second class, but nonetheless, nice clothing, nice warm clothing. That's the sort of thing that we're going for here. So we've got a fair few. Uh, I've also finally managed to find some figures of children as well, which is great because, of course, there were a fair few on Titanic. Um, so I'm very glad to have finally got some of those in as well because it would look a bit strange with all just adults across the entire deck. So there we go. Got a few more to do, um, but this should stand me in pretty good stead for most of the third class areas now. Now, I don't tend to film my producing these figures because... It is just unbelievably long-winded. Um, <clears throat> each figure probably is about 10-15 minutes work, and when you think that I've had to do 70 for this video alone, hopefully that does just convey just how much time this takes. So here is one that is almost done, save for a bit of hair colour, uh, but you can see that all of the other different colours that I've added are now finished. Black skirt, green top, 
and then a flesh tone for the face and the hands as well. And at this sort of scale, you don't really need much detail other than a fairly straight line for the skirt and a little daub for the hands and the head really does enough. Detail is not really even possible at this sort of scale. And here's a little child again, just requiring a little bit of hair colour. Um, <clears throat> so what I'll do here is I'll just show the, um, the process for adding a bit of skin tone to a figure. Uh, I hope I actually get it in shot because it's quite hard when I'm this zoomed in. But as you can see, this person is wearing an almost entirely black dress and I've just picked out the sort of the surrounding area of her neck in white, just to sort of give the idea of maybe a bit of lace frill or something like that. Uh, and all I'm doing is going round the head with the flesh tone. This is, for reference, Tamiya XF15, and it is called Flat Flesh. Uh, there we go, that's the head pretty much done. Now for the hands, uh, I tend just to literally daub the paintbrush on. This lady has her hands clasped in her lap, so there you go. That is, for me, sufficient. Now all this person requires is some uh, hair colour, and that's it. So we'll do one more, and this is another lady with a similar type of dress, black again with a bit of white lace. So we'll do the head first. There we go. Now this lady actually has her hand up at one of her hands at least up at her head. So we'll just daub that. And then the other one is by her side. So we'll just daub that as well. There we go. And that's us. Let that dry. So as I say, I've not really filmed a huge amount of these uh, figure paintings, um, but here's a close-up of a few. And as you can see, uh, the third-class passengers, they're, they're not necessarily wearing flamboyant, exciting clothes, but they're perfectly nice. Uh, lots of sort of lots of browns and greys and dark greens and in some cases sort of bluish greys, you know, fairly sort of functional clothing, probably more than anything else. Um, so I've got about 70, 80 figures finished now, which I'm hoping should be enough, but we will see. Um, so I'll now go about actually putting them onto the decks. Right, first off, the Foxall deck. Uh, now, I'm not going to put any passengers on this area at all. Um, <clears throat> Strictly speaking, passengers were allowed up to this point aft of the breakwater, this sort of triangular shaped piece here. Um, <clears throat> and of course, yes, Jack and Rose stood further up here, but I'm not putting Jack and Rose on the model. Now, <clears throat> I know that in reality, there is some records of passengers actually going beyond this point. Mrs. Churchill Candy apparently stood right at the bow on the morning before the sinking to watch the sunrise. So I suspect this is one of those things that either the rule of no passengers beyond the breakwater wasn't enforced, or perhaps no one was around to enforce it. But either way, passengers are known to have gone up there. However, for the purposes of my model, I'm not putting any passengers on the forecastle deck at all, because I think it would have been absolutely freezing, and I just can't see people going up there for many reasons. I can't see it being a, th a hive of activity. So, I'm going to put a couple of folk there, but they're all going to be officers and crew. So I'll crack on with that now, and then we shall see the result. So just a few words on how I'm doing this. Uh, normally I'd use quite a thin CA glue. Um, on this occasion I'm choosing to use a very thick CA glue, just because it tends to hold the people in place much more effectively as you're, as you're sticking them down. 
Um, I'm also choosing to use a CA activator spray just to make sure that the glue dries nice and quickly so I don't have to hang there with my tweezers for a long time. Here we go, just a few officers as you can see, two chatting together, one walking up to the front, one staring at the mast and one checking the stream anchor over there. It's not a hive of activity at all, um, but there's just a few. And once again, I, 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 I've said this a lot, um, but I tend to add figures to models because they make it seem more lifelike and they give you a scale. Um, you know, that is the size of a human being in comparison to the capstans, in comparison to the Ford cargo hatch. And it's amazing how much I get caught out because the first figure I put on here, I thought, crikey, that's, they look incredibly small. And it, it, it's amazing how, how, how I continually get caught out by this. But of course, the size of these people in comparison to the capstans and the anchor chains, they're tiny. Um, and as always, it just, it sort of shows the, the scale of the ship once again. Right, Ford Weldeck. As I've already said, uh, um, I'm not going to be putting that many people here because I think it would have been freezing. Uh, so just a few sort of shipboard diehards, so to speak, might be sitting at the front uh, and exclusively men on this deck. I'm not going to put any women on this deck at all. So just a few pretty, pretty hardy third class passengers and a couple of crew members, but nothing more. So here we are now, a hive of activity, aft well deck and of course the poop deck as well. Uh, in other news, I have removed those ladders that went underneath the steps. Uh, I finally managed to find, or rather I didn't find it, someone sent me a photo of Olympic right up against those stairs which proved that there were no ladders there. So thanks very much for everyone who suggested as much. We have now addressed and corrected that particular little issue and I think I'm very happy with how these look. They look quite lively. Um, it's amazing how many figures it takes to make it look like there's a lot of people on board. And I don't, even now, it doesn't look like it's, you know, 
thronged with people, but there's a good 60, 70 people there. So um, it goes to show how many you have to create in order to sort of make this work. Um, but it does look really nice. And as I say, it just brings it to life a bit more. It makes you feel like there's something going on on board, you know. We've got some nice little scenes going on, you know, we've got a mother there with her two children, somebody lying on the bench having a little snooze, uh, a couple of gents just standing by the rail maybe having a smoke, a couple of officers wandering around doing their rounds, perhaps a dad there talking with his daughter and a couple of people staring out into the distance and a few people just walking around minding their own business. Um, and I think this is a good level, really. I mean, the nice thing about people is that if in six months I decide that there's not enough, I can always come back and add more. Um, but for now, I'm pretty happy that that is enough. Um, my feeling is this would have been a cold crossing. So the vast majority of people will probably have been inside in here, in the smoking room, in the general room, or even in their cabins or just in the corridors staying inside where it was a wee bit warmer. That's my general feeling. Um, so I think this is a good number. But as I say, if at any point I decide that's not the case, I can always revisit. So there we go. So here we go. We're just going to do a bit of a drive by. As you can see, poop deck. Aftwell deck. And then the last shot of B&A deck as well. And combined into those four decks, you get a wonderful amount of life. The ship looks like it really could be at sea. So there we go. Uh, I'm very, very happy with how this has turned out. Uh, it seems like a good place to end the video for the day because I have accomplished all that I set out to at the start. So it seems like a good place to stop. Um, and yeah, I am, I'm very happy with how this has turned out. You know, I, I love the sort of little details that that obviously at the time I thought about, but then you sort of forget about it and you see them, you know, the, the chap lying down on the bench and then the, the mum standing there with her, with her son and daughter and this little chap here just, you know, leaning up against that pillar out the way with his legs crossed, the little child there complaining to his dad, the two gents standing at the rail gazing at the wake behind them as the ship goes forward. You know, it, it's it's really lovely and it just, it makes the model feel a lot more alive. Um, and it sort of, it takes away from that sort of, slightly sort of sterile effect, I think, of a model with, with no people on board. You know, even a ship in dock would would still have a lot of people on board. So it does just make the thing feel like a little bit more realistic. Um, <laughs> and as well, um, adding things like this is a fantastic opportunity to hide errors. For example, this where uh, this um, chap in the um, the sort of greyish blue tank top is standing, I managed to scuff that part of the deck uh, with a craft knife about a year ago, and it just uh, I damaged the uh, the printing of the deck, and it it, it looks it, it was a fairly obvious sort of mark, it was a fairly obvious imperfection, um, but now that I've put a passenger there can't see it anymore. Uh, so it's also a very good opportunity to sort of hide any sort of little errors that you've made at various points during the building, which of course, you know, are inevitable that you will make these little mistakes. Uh, so it's a wonderful opportunity for that. But um, yeah, just looking now with, with all those four decks, all the different classes, um, it's just a lovely part of the ship to look at now. So I'm really, really happy with it. Um, I'll end with some photos of this, um, but just briefly to say what I'm going to do in the next episode. Uh, I imagine what I'm probably going to do is, well, first of all, I'll stick that pipe down because it's fallen off. Um, so <laughs> stick that down. Uh, I will probably add the um, the dividing railings on the boat deck. There were various different sections. You know, there was a first class promenade, a second class promenade, an engineer's promenade, and of course the officer's space right at the front. Uh, and there were railings that divided off all of those territories. So I will add those. Uh, and I will probably start to add other deck bits. I think what I'll probably do first is the funnel stays. Um, because... These are the sort of the guy ropes that held the funnels in place. Um, and I think I'll add them before I add anything else, because I know if I don't, what will happen is I'll stick a person down or I'll stick a deck chair down and it'll be right in the way of where the funnel stay needs to go. So I'll add the funnel stays first, I think. So that'll probably be the next episode. And then the episode after that will be other passengers and stuff 
on the boat deck. Uh, and then we are really getting on to the end, really. There's not a huge amount left to go on this model, I'm afraid. So there we go. I will finish now with some shots of the passengers. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, do please like and or subscribe. If you haven't enjoyed this, do please like and or subscribe as well. Uh, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye for now.